When you initially heard of Azure Blob Storage, your first question was probably, what's a blob? The term traces its roots back to the early days of database technology. Database columns could contain only neatly structured values, like integers, characters, dates, and decimal numbers. But things changed in 1984. There were benefits to storing unstructured multimedia files alongside the structured columns, making a file easy to find using its row's primary key. The supervisor of this database enhancement project referred to unstructured files as blobs of data after the title of this cheesy cult classic movie. The project's architect, Jim Starkey, never really liked this term, but it became popular around the office. Though the marketing department felt blob was too unprofessional, so they tried to create an acronym out of its letters, and the one that stuck was binary large object. Today, blob is synonymous with file, and the notion that blobs are only for unstructured data has gone away because you can store highly structured files in blob storage, like Parquet and Avro files, or semi-structured data like XML and JSON. In 1997, Jim made it clear that blob doesn't really stand for anything, and 25 years later, we see that this was a prophetic statement. If we look at file types stored in blob storage today, they don't have to be binary encoded like a JPEG image. They can be human readable like a simple text file. And they don't have to be large. They can be very small files. The only part of the blob backronym that is still relevant today for blob storage is the object part. A blob is an object. So let's find out what that means. Azure Blob Storage is an object storage service, which organizes data differently than our laptops. Typically, we use a file system, which manages data in a hierarchy of folders in Windows or directories in Linux. One thing a file system has in common with object storage is that you can store any kind of file type. With object storage, you store objects in a container. An object bundles a file with descriptive metadata and a unique identifier. A blob is an object, so as I describe what we can do with blob storage, you'll see how objects can be more useful than files alone. Seeing what you can do with the Azure Blob API is the best way to understand what you can do with blob storage. But first, I use the GUI Azure portal to create a storage account for my experiments. A storage account provides a unique namespace in Azure for your data. One account can contain many containers, but it's not possible to nest a container inside another container. You can store many blobs in a container. The only limiting factor is that each account has a maximum capacity, but the current default is about 6,000 terabytes, so you'll probably be limited by cost before you ever reach the maximum capacity. The names that you give to an account, container, and blob define the blob's unique identifier, which is its URL, or Uniform Resource Locator. A resource references an object, and in our case, the object is a blob. To demonstrate blob storage functionality, I'll show some Python snippets that call the blob API. First, I link to my account using a connection string that contains my account key, which I copied from the Azure portal. I use the account to create a new container, and note how I can assign helpful metadata to my container object. Then in my container, I create a blob that contains my file, plus a set of metadata tags. 
Now I'll show some useful methods for navigating around your storage account. I can get a list of all the containers within my account, or just the container names that start with a certain string. There's a powerful method to find the blobs inside all of your account's containers which contain certain metadata tag values. Here's an example of searching for blobs based on two tags, market and domain. I can get a list of all the blobs in one container, or just the blob names that start with a certain string. Here's something really cool. You can execute a simple SQL query on a blob to read only its records that match certain criteria. The cool part is that I executed this against a CSV text file, not a relational database table. You can combine methods to really narrow down your search. Here, I'm querying inside certain blobs from certain containers. I wanted to show this method because block blob is the default blob type. When you upload a file to a block blob, it's automatically chopped up into blocks and stored in these pieces, which are then automatically reassembled when you read the blob. When I make this API call, I get a list of all the blocks for one blob. You can see here that each block contains four mebibytes of data, except for the last block. Now that we know what a block is, we can look at this method, which appends blocks to the end of a blob. Here we have two small CSV files, with three records in each. If I upload the first file into a blob, and then upload the second file into that same blob, the blob only contains records from the second file, because block blobs are immutable. You can only create them, overwrite them, and delete them. However, when I upload the first file, if I define the blob to be an append blob, then I can call the append block method to upload the second file into the same blob, and our blob now contains records from both files. So the only way to update a blob is by appending a file to the end of it. The last method I'll show for blobs enables a useful snapshot functionality. As I showed earlier, when I upload a blob, it gets a unique URL like this. However, at any time, I can snapshot a blob, and the copy will get a special URL that contains the timestamp of when the blob was copied. Next, I'll discuss Azure Data Lake Storage. And the elephant in the room is this funny buzzword. So let's first look at its origin. In 2018, Microsoft announced a preview of their cloud HDFS service, which was the second generation of Azure Data Lake Storage. HDFS is an acronym for Hadoop Distributed File System. So let's take a quick look at Hadoop. Hadoop works with a file system similar to the one that I talked about earlier, but it's spread across the data nodes in a cluster of servers. Hadoop's components were named in a practical manner, so a file system distributed across hundreds or thousands of servers was simply called the Hadoop Distributed File System. However, when vendors started selling Hadoop-related software, Marketing departments weren't happy with the term Hadoop Distributed File System. It doesn't really roll off the tongue, and when you look at the name, it doesn't really sound very impressive because storage file systems had been around for 50 years. Marketing got what it was looking for in 2010 when a blog announcing the availability of a BI company's first Hadoop product made an analogy between Hadoop and water. Here's my visualization of that analogy. Data streams into Hadoop in its raw, unprocessed form. Then a pipeline of data engineering processes cleanse and transform the raw data into high-quality assets ready-made for consumption via database tables. Water streams into a lake in its raw, unprocessed form, then a pipeline of water treatment processes 
cleanse and transform the raw water into potable water ready-made for consumption via water bottles. James wrote about his analogy like this. If you think of a data mart as a store of bottled water, cleansed and packaged and structured for easy consumption, the data lake is a large body of water in a more natural state. So this is how we got the data lake buzzword a dozen years ago. But don't despair, just remember the analogy. Like raw water streaming into a lake, raw data in any file type can be stored in a distributed file system. To test Azure Data Lake storage, I used the Azure portal to create a new storage account. I set it up exactly the same way that I set up the blob storage account, except for this one switch that I turned on to enable a hierarchy of directories. To understand the difference between blob storage and data lake storage, let's take a very high level view of Azure's blob storage infrastructure. A data center contains clusters of storage servers. A geographic region like Virginia contains at least three data centers. And Microsoft has many regions around the world. To perform the blob storage methods that I described earlier, like creating containers and querying blobs, I used the Azure Storage Blob API. To perform the data lake methods that I'll describe next, I simply used a different API. So you see, there is no such thing as a data lake storage device. Data lake storage is just a different software abstraction on top of the same Azure blob storage that I just talked about. This brings up a very important question. When companies migrated from on-prem Hadoop clusters with direct attached disks to cloud Hadoop clusters that use blob storage, why couldn't they just use the existing blob API? The obvious answer is that blob storage doesn't enable a hierarchy of directories, but a reason just as significant is the fact that you cannot rename objects in blob storage. While a job like Hive or Spark runs on a Hadoop cluster, processing data in parallel, it writes results into a temporary directory and then renames that temporary location after processing completes. Here's what that process would look like if the blob API had to be used. Say we have a temporary container that we filled with blobs. Since we cannot rename the container, we have to first copy each blob into a new container, then delete each blob from the temporary container. So if we had a million blobs in our temporary container, and we wanted to simulate renaming the container like this, then we would need to call the blob API a million times to copy each blob to the new container, and then call the blob API a million more times to delete each blob from the old container. But with the data lake API, we can rename directories. So an operation like this gets executed with one call to the Data Lake API, and your Hadoop or Spark job finishes a whole lot faster. We'll take a tour now of the interesting things you can do with the Data Lake API. This is our storage account, with the hierarchical feature turned on. A file system is actually just a blob storage container. Inside the file system, we create directories, Inside a directory, we create subdirectories, and then we upload files into a directory or subdirectory. A useful benefit of using blob storage to emulate a file system is that our files are loaded into objects with metadata and a unique URL. Here's the pattern for a data lake URL. The service endpoint in a blob URL starts with the word blob whereas the service endpoint in a data lake URL starts with DFS. And this should make sense because a data lake is a distributed file system, DFS. Like with the blob API, 
We start using the Data Lake API by connecting to our storage account. We use our account to create a file system. We use the file system to create a directory. We use our directory to create a subdirectory. And then we create files in the subdirectory. Similar to how we use the Blob API to list all containers, we can use the Data Lake API to list all file systems or only the file system names that begin with a certain string. We can get combinations of directory, subdirectory, and file names for all paths under a file system or just those under a certain path name in a file system. Like with the Blob API, we can combine data lake methods to perform more complex searches, like here where I'm searching file metadata values for files under a certain path. Query file is just like query blob and enables us to return a subset of a file's records based on a simple SQL statement. A file object is like an append blob. You can create it, delete it, and append data to it. So after I upload data1 to a file object, I can then append data2 to the end of the same file object. As I showed earlier, you can rename a directory or subdirectory, and the reason that this command works so fast is because it's just a single metadata operation. And unlike with blobs, you can rename files. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Azure Blob Storage and Data Lake Storage.